Once again, you're welcome to the Umaru Musa Eradua Hall here at the Murtala Muhammad Center in Kaduna, the Kaduna State Capital, where the town hall meeting is uh, taking place. A concept uh, to bridge the communication gap between the government and citizenry and keep them better informed about the programs and policies of government. We've heard from the Minister of uh, Information and Culture, Alajilai Mohammed, who conceptualized of the event and uh, at the moment it's a question and answer session before we have the next minister who will be talking after the minister of budget and planning Hajia Zainab Ahmed. Now we have the minister of petroleum on the podium Dr. Ibe Kachiku. Uh, distinguished uh, senators, honorable members here present, royal fathers, my lord spiritual and temporal your excellent, High Excellency, the wife of the Governor of Kaduna State, I stand on existing protocols. Uh, first, let me start by uh, thanking you for receiving us. Uh, Kaduna State isn't new to me. I, my father was the Federal High Court judge in Kano and had covering responsibilities for Kaduna and my degree and Boronu State. So. I grew up partly at Bompire Road, Kano, so this is like coming back home. So thank you for getting me back again. Let, let me start by first apologizing for the difficulties you have in terms of getting your fuel. Uh, when I arrived this morning from Lagos, I did a quick tour of Kaduna. And although the situation is improving, I felt sad still that a couple of areas around the central areas are not getting the sort of product they deserve quickly, uh, especially since you have the privilege and the honor of having a refinery here. And so I immediately called my depot representative and said, the last thing I want to see uh, is to run into my friend, the governor of the state, and he will first ask me why he has to have a problem after having given me land to build a refinery. And so I asked him to leave my convoy and head back and get the fuel into the stations so I don't see a fuel key when I'm leaving here. I hope he, he abides by that. But, but the reality um, of our situation is that wherever I turned when I was appointed, I found problems. If I turned to the refineries when I joined in October, on August, they were not working. If I turned to the pipelines, they were non-existent. If I turned to the upstream, there was no funding, so production was sliding. If I turned to the NMPC structure, there were massive issues of transparency that everybody quarreled about. And if I turned to what the future was for Nigerians, because everybody is loyal, I saw disillusionment rather than hope. So I took over this mantle under those circumstances. But I wasn't discouraged. I wasn't discouraged because if I had problems, what would I say of the man who at his age took over the mantle of ruling this country, His Excellency the President? So that gave me a lot of encouragement. In these few months, I have tried to address the problems. Uh, for the first time, the three refineries in Nigeria are back working together. Even though not at the capacity, I love to see them. A lot more work still needs to be done to get into the level of performance that I would want. For the first time, we have um, uh, pipelines delivering crude oil to the refineries, both from Brass to Port Harcourt and from Wari, Escravos to Wari. This is the first time that's happened in eight years. So that is ongoing. For the first time in 20 years, we took the bold audacity to go ahead, to go ahead and try and restructure NNPC. Because unless we did that, the issues of transparency, the issues of staff morale, the issues of direction of policies were never going to happen. And we've successfully done that. And that took massive amounts of work. But we still have to deal with the behemoth, which is the fuel issue. And the reality is that as long as these refineries don't work in absolutely top capacity, as long as we do not have the foreign exchange to bring in the product because money basically in the system is dissipated, as long as the price of crude continues to slide and part of my responsibilities is getting it up, and I did give my colleagues the hope that I was going to get it up to 50, I'm happy today is 46. As long as those conditions continue, we will have problems with fuel. So you've got to apply brain work to it. Do I want to see it continuing? No. There's been a lot of improvement, but there's a lot of work required, and in the next few months, I assure you that you see a completely sanitized area in terms of fuel supply. We're working on those. There is a whole lot of work still to be done. I can't go through all of that. 
most important, we need to begin to develop massive infrastructural support in this country. The pipelines crisscrossing this country must get to work. We've got to get investors to invest in them because we do not have money to build them up. More refineries have to be built. The target is to build three more co-located refineries in Kaduna, in Wari, and in Port Chanko, taking advantage of or the, the, the need to share facilities. And if we do this by 2018, sorry, by 2018, if all our refineries are working, we will drop importation by 60%. And by 2019, if the co-located refineries begin to work, and I'm sure that they will, we will actually begin to export petroleum products for the first time in this country. So there's a massive amount of direction. For the upstream sector where production has been climbing down, our target is to move production up to 2.3 million barrels, but I'm personally committed to 2.5 million barrels. For that to happen, I have to find funding for the offshore sector. We're doing that. For the first time, we're engaged in negotiations that will enable the federal government to exit the process of cash calls and leave money belonging to government to Nigerians to do their development. In addition to that, we're watching costs. A barrel of crude oil production on, on, on joint venture acreages right now is averaging about $18 a barrel would like to be able to bring that down to about 12. Saudi Arabia is about 10. Qatar is at about 8. We need to be able to match those. We have very unique problems in terms of, in terms of pipelines. Uh, last week, my phone number got published in Sahara Reporters, and then I began to get millions of phone calls. And the, one of the first calls that I took, not knowing who was calling me, was from a brother militant somewhere. And when he picked up the phone, he says, is this the Minister of Petroleum? I said, yes. He said, the good blue pipeline tomorrow. And I said, why, why, my brother, would you want to do that? It belongs to all Nigerians. He said, are you sure you are the minister? I said, yes. He said, for being so humble, I will drop the plan. That's the kind of environment under which we operate. We are aware that in the last few days, pipelines have been blown. But this should not make us lose hope. This country must be a country founded on hope and self-belief. I am not discouraged by the problems. I am encouraged by the opportunities to, to serve. Am I encouraged by the opportunities to bring projects back on track? Am I encouraged by the individual aspirations of all of you? Because at the end of the day, really, it is not us, the government. It is you, the citizens, who have to drive this country. And when I see the hope, when I see the self-belief, when I see the criticisms, when I see the expectations, when I see the advisory support that we get from everybody, I tell myself that the days of disillusionment are past. The days of hopelessness are past. The days of careless expenditures are past. The days of corruption are going. And we're heading to a future where we can deliver a country that we can all be proud of. I ask you before I round up my, my talk, because I'm very conscious of your time, uh, when I did this in Lagos, I said to myself that the issue is not what I tell you that I'm doing, because you'll find that out on the internet. The issue is how much hope I leave in you when I leave here. And I asked everybody to stand with me and do a recital. Today I'm going to do a different recital. I'm going to ask everybody to please stand up. Please stand up. Uh, hold hands together, please. Stand up, hold hands together, hold your neighborness, and please recite after me. We are Nigerians. Nigerians. We are linked by our common destiny. We are linked by our common destiny. Our placement and our purpose. Our placement and our purpose. Our country is blessed in ways unimaginable. Our country is blessed in ways unimaginable. We as Nigerians are not limited by hope. We as Nigerians are not limited by hope. Not limited by resources. Not limited by resources. Not limited by talents. Not limited by talents. Not limited by aspirations. Not limited by aspirations. Our nation has had its challenges. Our nation has had its challenges. But we remain abundantly blessed. But we remain abundantly blessed. So today. So today. This moment. This moment. Now. Now. Going forward. Going forward. We join hands across our land. We join hands across our land. Hands across our tribes. Hands across our tribes. Hands across our religion. Hands across our religion. Hands with our leaders. Hands with our leaders. And our followers. And our followers. And as United Nigerians united in struggle. And as Nigerians united in struggle. We have decided to build a Nigeria of our dreams. We have decided to build a Nigeria of our dreams. A Nigeria of less criticisms but creativity. A Nigeria of less criticisms but creativity. A Nigeria of abundance, not scarcity. A Nigeria of abundance, not scarcity. A Nigeria uni unified, not fractioned. A Nigeria unified, not fractioned. A Nigeria transparent, not fraudulent. 
A Nigeria transparent, not fraudulent. A Nigeria with abundant dreams, aspirations, and delivery. A Nigeria with abundant dreams and delivery. Today, this moment. Today, this moment. We stand on the thresholds of history. We stand in thresholds of history. To build a new Nigeria of our dreams. To build a new Nigeria of our dreams. Thank you. And thank you very much. We thank uh, the Honorable Minister of Petroleum for the brief and we thank you very much for apologizing to Nigerians. It is a government without impunity. With your permission, the moderator, may I now invite the Honorable Minister of Solid Minerals to please come to the podium to address the people of Kaduna Street and Nigerians. Honorable Minister, Solid Minerals.